Hello everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on the Google Search Appliance, where we're going to discuss how organizations are using this technology to find what they need fast. My name is Richard Alshe, and I'm head of Enterprise Search in Asia. And before I discuss the technology, I normally talk to customers about the time before Google.com. In other words, to think back to a time, you know, 15, 20 years ago, before they had Google for search as consumers in, in their personal lives. And before Google, we often would have these debates. Maybe we were talking to our friends at a cafe, and you're debating about, could be about sports or movie trivia, where you're debating on who was in a particular film or who scored a, scored a goal in a particular match. And because we didn't have the information ready at hand at, at our fingertips, often these debates would just go unresolved. But now that you have Google, what you're finding is that people will just take out their smartphone and within about two seconds they'll resolve the argument pretty quickly. So that's life after Google, where we expect that information is very, very easy to find. So we expect really the information to be ubiquitous. It should be on the internet, it should be on your tablet, it should be on your phone, and you should be able to answer literally any question in less than a second. And that's life sort of after Google. Now, most organizations inside their companies, whether it's referring to their intranet portals or their internet websites, are experiencing life before Google. In other words, many organizations find it very, very difficult to find information inside their company's portals or on the company website in terms of their, their consumer experience. So it's not that hard to move from life before Google to life after Google. However, people need to first understand what's the value. So we're going to discuss that today. Before we do that, let's talk a little bit about what Google, happens on Google.com. So on Google.com, I often ask people to guess the, the following couple bit of trivia points. The first one is um, to guess, on average, how many search terms do people type into Google.com? And the answer, while some people might say five or four or three, it's actually two. There's, on average, people use two search terms on Google.com for a successful search. The second question I ask is, how many people, or what percentage of people, rather, click on the first page of results on Google.com? And what we find is that it's over 94%, say actually 94% of people click on the first page of results on Google.com. And that's what we refer to as search relevance. That means that you should be able to answer your question with a couple words on the first top 10 results on Google.com, and ideally on the first results. Now what's happening behind the scenes is that Google is receiving over 100 billion search queries per month, of which 300, millions of those query, 300 million of those queries are new. So Google's always adapting to new information and, and new types of uh, queries that are hitting Google all the time around the world. And to adapt to that, to be able to do things like query suggestion, to be able to come back with the most relevant results, we have over 200 signals within the algorithm. And what's a signal? So an example of a signal could be a very simple one is date, how recent the article is, or the, the, the link is. Another signal is user behavior. So if people keep clicking the fifth link instead of the top four links, eventually that is a signal that that might be a more relevant link. And there's over 200 of these different signals within the algorithm. And that algorithm's being improved over 500 times a year, almost, almost twice, twice a day. And so that's what's happening on Google.com. And that same technology is being now used by enterprises to drive the search on their own websites, as well as for their intranet portals and intranet applications. And the reason people are applying this technology to the enterprise is because the problem in enterprise data is that it's a mixture of unstructured and structured information. So unstructured information being things like emails and uh, Word documents and spreadsheets, or maybe videos and images. Structured information referring to things in a relational database. And this information is growing at 61% per year, according to Forrester. So this problem of finding information is just going to get more and more difficult as time goes on. So you really need a technology to help you very quickly search for information and retrieve the right information the same way you have that experience on Google.com. 
The other reason that people are really looking at this technology is that there's tremendous productivity gains to be made by putting in an effective search solution within the enterprise. So just within the internet, for companies with knowledge workers, they on average will spend about 38% of their time unsuccessfully searching for information and then as a direct byproduct of that failed search, they go and gather information either by talking to the people or having people send them emails and they'll recreate that content. And that really adds up to 38% of knowledge workers' time. So it's really, think of having all your knowledge workers being able to get two days per week back in terms of productivity. And you can very quickly build a business case around a, an effective enterprise search solution. So Google, we just think this it should be easier. It should be just like the Google.com experience, fast, relevant searches from any device. And that's exactly what you get with something we call the Google Search Appliance. So for those of you who didn't think that we were talking about, who probably thought we were talking about a cloud-based application, this is a very unusual product from Google. For one, it's a physical device. We don't make really a lot of physical device at Google, devices at Google. We're really known to be a cloud company. And this isn't a cloud-based solution. It really sits right inside your data center in a standard to your rack unit. Secondly, uh, the very strange thing about this product is for some reason we painted it yellow and put these odd looking holes in the front of it. It's often refers to as the cheese box. Um, if you do buy the solution, we strongly encourage you to paint it your own colors, um, anything but this yellow. But the idea is that it really is your own box. It's your own Google.com sitting right inside your data center that you own and that you manage and control. And then what you can do with that is then index all your different data sources sources inside the company. Whether that's your Siebel CRM system, maybe it's your file shares, it could be your SAP procurement system, it could be a content management system like SharePoint or Documentum. So whatever the location of the file is or the database is, Google will be able to index that. That information will be stored where it's stored natively. It'll stay inside the file share, for example, and Google will create an index against those systems and then it will rely on your existing security. So think of just having a, a single search bar to get access to all your different systems. And then having using connectors, many of which are built out, out of the box. So Google provides connectors to the more popular content management systems and data sources like Documentum and SharePoint, and LiveLink and Lotus Notes and FileNet. Now, if you're using other content management systems, let's say Alfresco or Atlassian Confluence, then you'll be able to use third-party connectors. Now, if neither of these um, connectors exist for your particular system, let's say you have a, a custom-built system in-house, Google will be able to work with you and our partners to build a specific connector just for that particular system. So regardless of where the information sits, Google should be able to index it. And then we'll integrate with your existing security. So one thing that's really strong to point out is that Google is relying 100% on your existing security protocols. It's not overriding your security, it's working with your security. That means that if I'm able to access information today through the particular system, if I, for example, have access in SharePoint for a certain document, I have access in Documentum for a certain document, then I should be able to see that in a search through the Google Search Appliance. Alternatively, or conversely rather, if I can access that document, then it shouldn't show up in a search because it's using the security within SharePoint, within Documentum, or maybe your single sign-on or Active Directory. Whatever that security protocol is, that's what Google bases its secure search on. And for many companies out there, they have, they have one or two things, or maybe both. They, they'll have built-in search within a particular system, but a built-in search will typically be limited to silo. So SharePoint has built-in search, but it's going to be really limited to SharePoint, so it won't be universal. And even within that particular silo of information, Google Search will be able to deliver much more fast, much more relevant results just for that one system. But it'll also be a universal system. In other words, it'll be able to search many different repositories all at once. Now, for organizations that have gone down this path of trying to build their own internal search system, or maybe they bought from some other third party, 
what they'll find is that they typically are managing a, a complex network of different servers. And those servers will be the search index servers themselves or the web servers or the front end. It could be their storage system, their database servers. What they'll find is that in order to deliver what we can deliver with a single Google search appliance, they might need as many as 10 or 20 different devices to manage. So complexity becomes an issue. The other thing that we find is that these organizations that have, are trying to effectively build their own search solution or manage all these different servers, typically they're doing that with probably a handful of people that are not necessarily dedicated to search. So they might have three people that have been working with search as part of their job. And what they're trying to do effectively is, is really replicate the entire work of Google's 20,000 over engineers who have been doing search for the last 10 or 15 years, depending on their experience level. It's really, it makes it very difficult for them to deliver the expectations of their end users because the end users ultimately expect a Google.com experience. Google sort of set the bar in that area. And so rather than manage all this complexity and rather than spend your valuable IT resources trying to replicate Google.com, why not just use Google.com on a box, which is exactly what's delivered with the Google search box. And for those people that are just relying on the built-in search within the applications, like the built-in search within Documentum or SharePoint or your file servers, what we normally talk about with these companies is that in those products, search is a, is a feature because they had to provide some sort of search feature. But those organizations are, are typically not focused on search. And certainly no one's focused on search at the scale that Google search would focus on this particular specific technology. And we've built up this, this, this IP, the experience and the skills, to consistently deliver a superior performance. And that's why people will often switch to the Google search appliance to replace built-in search as well as their existing universal search solutions. So I'm going to go through a little bit, exam a few examples of, uh, of some of our customer success with Google search appliance. So in the telco space, I'll give you some examples that we have. But in, out here in the region, you have Globe and Xox, you have a number of the companies are using the Google search appliance. And I think Vodafone's a really good example in the telecommunication space because their challenge is that they were using the, they're, they're, before they used the Google search appliance, they were already about two years into a major integration project. And that integration project was very ambitious. They're bringing together SAP and SharePoint and Lotus Notes. And what they're finding is that they, they, after about two years, they realized that they fundamentally had a search problem. While they did have integration as, as part of that, that problem, really search was becoming a real issue. And what they found was that with, with the Google search appliance, they're able to eliminate a huge amount of the integration work they had to do. Instead, they just focus on integrating just the most essential parts of their business or the most essential processes. And they relied on search to provide that universal experience to access information from all their different systems. And so they limited, eliminated much of the integration work they had to do. And they have, now have a much more user-friendly way of accessing this information. And now they've extended that to Vodafone.com. So if you go to the e-shops on Vodafone, there many of them around the world are using the Google search appliance. Another good example is Excel Oxiata, Excel Oxiata in Indonesia. Previously, they were using uh, an, an, a third-party search solution, and they put in the Google search appliance, and immediately they had relevant results um, for their, their customer-facing portals. So this helps both in terms of their the cost of serving customers, as well as click-through rates. The good examples here we have in the government space, and you'll notice there's a few different pan uh, patterns with our uh, government customers and our and our banking customers and telco customers. These these specific these particular industries they they tend to be very very concerned with security. They tend to be very very concerned with privacy. And when they looked at the way the Google search appliance is delivered as, as an appliance that's inside the data center, and they stress tested it, and they did penetration testing, they realized this, this was the most secure solution that they could find on the market. And just of some of the examples we have here, Ministry of the Works in Malaysia, uh, DSTA here in Singapore, and the government of Hong Kong, 
as well as the Thai National Assembly, which is an example I'll go into more detail. So a wide variety of customers around the world using the Google Search Appliance in the public sector. So my favorite example of this part of the world is Thai National Assembly. What they did was they took about 350,000 official documents dating back as early as 1932. And what they did was they moved all these documents to, or they indexed all these documents rather with Google Search Appliance, and they allowed that to be accessed externally by people in universities and, and legislature, people that were doing research on Thai law. And an interesting thing really happened. That their intent was just to make it easier to find information on the website. What they found was that this had a knock-on benefit. Because the uh, website became much more relevant, and because people kept using it more and more and more, they found it increased overall user traffic by over 200%. Because now the Thai National Assembly just went from a basic information portal to becoming very information rich just by allowing people to access these historical documents through the Google search appliance. And the Kunadisak, who helped manage the project, said that it was particularly effective using um, searching on the Thai language. And is very, very pleased with what Google's had to offer and the, the impact has been significant to them. Here are some examples of our customers here in Asia using the Google search appliance. And the one in particular I'll go into detail about will be Nomura. So Nomura is using the Google search appliance for their internet. And out of 27,000 people that they have using the Google search appliance, they are using the, the previous search uh, system that they had on OpenText. They only had about 300 searches per day on the previous solution. So if you think about that 27,000 employees only searching this about 300 times per day, you could see they're probably only using this on average a few times per year. And so you can imagine what these people are doing. They're probably checking out the, the search capability that was there before, realized it wasn't working very well. They kind of gave up on it, came back later to test it out again. They would do this a few times per year. So then they put in the Google search appliance to replace the open text based internet search. What they went found is that they went from roughly eight to 10,000 search queries per month with the previous solution to 500,000 search queries per month. So that works out to about 12,000 per hour, which per employee for 27,000 employees is roughly a search every couple hours. So people started to work the way they live. They started to use search same way they use search externally on Google.com, they started to use search as part of their natural business flow. And here are some great examples in the high tech space. Obviously, we use Google internally. We use this at Google. Um, my favorite example that I'll point out to you is Emerson. So we'll show you what Emerson is doing with the Google search points. Now, in case of Emerson, you might see their advertisements in the airport. They, you, you might be aware that they do very complex pro projects. Um, many of which are very unique, but sometimes there's some overlap in terms of the, the, with the proposal material, certainly pricing, reference material, sales collateral. What they're finding is that both internally as well as externally, it's very difficult to find information. Previously, they were using Microsoft's index server, but they are finding that it just wasn't good enough. And they're finding that it was still very difficult to find information. And customers complained that it was very difficult to find information online. And internally, the sales teams were complaining that they were finding it difficult to find the information they needed to do, to, to do their jobs effectively. So they integrated the Google search appliance with over 68 servers across Emerson. And what they found was that the time spent searching was improved by 99%. So it used to take 30 minutes to find, now only takes 15 seconds. So they are very, very pleased with the results and they get excellent user feedback. I think it's just a great example of how search can dramatically improve productivity inside an organization. And my final example will be in higher education. So I'll show you um, some examples of how organizations today are using the Google search appliance. I think Illinois State's a really good example of that. We also have the City University of Hong Kong, University of Malaya, National Institute of Education here in Singapore and in US, all using the Google search appliance within their organizations. In Illinois State in particular, what they're looking to do is they wanted to provide up to the minute course information for 20,000 students and over 1,000 faculty members and the public at large. And so they put in the Google search appliance to 
I'll put in a new course finder capability. And before, they had a system that really couldn't do much in terms of allowing for people to search on the criteria that they wanted to search on. It was really just limited to things like um, uh, the, the name of the course and basically sort of can predefined queries. But if someone wanted to say, search on the day of the week or the evening classes or any of the context within that syllabus, it, it would be very difficult to do that. And then they put in the Google search clients and they roll this out to the 20,000 students and they got immediate um, positive response from users and just improved the transparency and the ease of access to information and really saved them a huge amount of time and effort so they didn't have to maintain that old um, query system that they had. Now they just use the Google search clients. So what I'm going to do now is a brief demo of the Google search clients. This particular demo is going to show you examples of how Google search is used uh, both publicly as well as internally. And my favorite example that I'll use um, publicly is Apple.com. So when you're using the Google search clients on Apple.com, what you'll see, I'll just type in Apple.com. If you go in here and you do a search, let's say on iPad, you'll notice that it's similar to that Google.com experience. You'll have iPad Mini and iPad Air. You'll have common searches here at the top. That's really describing from the Google al algorithm, it's actually telling you what are the most common searches according to the searches done by other users. Down here, the marketing team has put in specific promoted links that they want to recommend to users as a way to push them to different products. And so I'm going to click here on iPad Air and it will take me right, of course, to the iPad Air section. So it gives them an opportunity to sort of advertise on their own website. So let's say I just type in iPad and hit the carriage return. And then after a second or two, I'll see this section right here, which are again, promoted results. So it's almost like advertising on your website. What they are able to do is match that keyword iPad to the three links that they really want people to be aware of. In this case, the iPad Air, the iPad Mini, and the apps for iPad. And down here, these are the organic search results for iPad. Now, if I go into a different section of the website, and I'll do a similar search for iPad, what I'll find is that instead of promoting marketing material, now it's really focused on me as an end customer. It's, since I'm searching the support section, this is going to push me not to new product information, but to iPad support pages, to the user groups, etc. And so it's just using that same technology, it can provide a different experience depending on where the user is on the website. So now we're going to show you a couple demonstrations of the Google search appliance at work. So the first example is an internet example. So searching inside the corporate firewall. And we have a fictitious company. It's called Autostrat. It has nothing to do with Alta Vista, by the way. And then you'll see this is, looks a lot like Google.com. However, you can customize the search page and the search results pages to look and feel however you want. I'm going to search on federal regulation. And as soon as I type in the word R, you start to type the word regulation, I already have a suggestion. These suggestions, again, are coming from all the other searches that people have done. And the GSA eventually learns what's the most relevant search and tries to, end, to complete the, uh, the search query for you. So you can hear, see here's an example where I can filter based on the content repository for this example. So you can see it's going on SharePoint, Documentum, and the file system, and the various systems inside the business. For example, I can click on SharePoint, and within a couple seconds, it will filter just on SharePoint content. I'm going to go back to everything, and now I want to filter on the author. So I'm going to go back and just click on the author, and I'll look at the... I know the author begins with the initials BIS, it's like the Bank of International Settlements. So I can just go in here and go B, I. You can see it already suggested BIS. And then I'll search on just the documents for federal regulation brief by this particular author, and it comes down exactly to the one document. And I'll go back out to the main page. And sometimes if I'm on, let's say, an iPad, I'm not necessarily going to want to download the entire document. Maybe I just want to preview it. So you can see I can mouse over this document. And then I could be able to see a preview. I can 
leaf through this whole document like an ebook, and it's all within the browser. So I didn't have to download anything to my to my iPad in order to, in, or, in order to look at this entire document. And I could have this document translated on the fly. So in this case, I'm going to translate it to traditional Chinese, and then with one click, I can email it to my colleague. Now, also, if I'm on a mobile device, I'm not necessarily going to want to use typing. Maybe I just want to search by voice. So I'm going to search on corporate finance. Corporate finance. Okay, and within a couple seconds, it'll search on the corporate finance uh, information inside the company. Um, you'll see on the top here, it has examples of uh, contributed results. And what, what do contributed results mean? It means that I, I can add my own suggested search result based on this term. And you can open that up to everyone to just add their own search results. In this case, I've added this one earlier. Or you can moderate it. And what that means is if you can control what is posted as a suggested search, just in case you're worried about some of your employees posting sort of inappropriate or wrong, the wrong content for a search, then you can have an IT administrator with just simply click to approve any suggested contributed results. So this is a way to make search more social. Another example of how you can use this technology to go beyond just indexing your corporate repositories is to use this for expert search. And this is, I'll show you what we mean by this. So I'm going to click into this one expert, Jose Torres. And what you'll see is that the search appliance has now gone to the different repositories. And it's built a composite of expertise. What I mean by that is taking information from the LDAP directory to get his email and his chat and his desk phone and his location. I can, for example, have a chat directly here with Jose. This is integrated, happens to be integrated right with Google Apps. I can say hi. Jose will respond to me, hey. Jose, of course, is not a real person. This is a demo. And that's all he can say is hey. But you can see this be, make it a lot easier to find the right people and get in touch with them very quickly. I can also look at Jose's location. He happens to be located in, looks like, Santa Monica, California. And I can see his expert skills. This could be pulled from SharePoint profiles. It could be pulled from an HR database or really any system that's capturing this information. And here's uh, uh, documents that he's authored, as well as the reporting tree. So this just gives you a great example of how you go beyond just searching for text-based documents and, and start to dig into searching for the right experts inside your company based on all the various information you have about people inside the organization. So that's a great example of intranet search. Now I'm going to look at internet search, like public-facing website search. And interestingly, one of the best examples I have to offer is a bank. Now, lots of banks out there are not necessarily differentiating themselves through their corporate website. However, Commonwealth Bank, I would see, is definitely being one of the leaders, uh, certainly out here in Asia Pacific region, in terms of really using the website to to brand themselves very, very clearly in the customer's mind. And I'll show you some great examples of that. They had this whole concept of I can, very positive message. And they wanted to present information very easily to people, give them, make them feel empowered to make informed decisions. Now let's say, for example, I searched on loan. And when I search on loan, in a couple seconds, I'll see the search results. Totally different look and feel from what we just saw with the intranet, because they've customized this using their own branding, of course, as well as using Adobe CQ5. And here you can see I can search on everything. I can search just on items within what they refer to as the support tab, in case people need to ask sort of like frequently asked questions. Also, tools like calculators, and blogs, and documents. But the, one of, there's a few things I really like about the website as, as a consumer. If I look at say, a particular document, I'm going to click on the loan calculator, and I go in here. One thing I can do is just flag this, and it'll immediately, uh, it'll immediately come up in the Stuff I Like section. And that's not a particular feature of the Google search finds. It's an example of how they use search to get to the right article and then give them a really easy way to sort of pin this to their profile. In this case, um, just using a cookie. Um, I can also, say, search on credit card. 
and you'll see real quickly at the top um, the typical search results. In this case, remember we had the example of the contributed result in the internet. Here, it's a feature result. And again, they completely control this. This is out of the box feature with the Google search clients, matching the keyboard credit card with a specific URL. Also, you notice they have embedded videos, which they've they use as a way to educate the audience. Again, very easy to, to set this up with the Google search appliance. So it just gives you a good example of website search, um, a very different look and feel than the previous example, which more, was more just a standard search template from the Google search appliance. And how they've really used this to make it much easier to find information on their public facing website and also to, to drive more traffic to the website and more conversion rates. So those are the two demos that I want to share with you. Um, if you want more information on the Google Search Appliance, you can click on the links below to get access to more information or to have one of our representatives speak to you directly.